He plays actually G takes F, and after E takes, massive threat now of F6. Black plays Bishop F8. After Queen F3, how is Black defending that poor H5 pawn? He can't really defend it. After E4, Queen H5, Black resigns. So this really was a preliminary positional slaughter to make sure Black had no opportunities for counterplay, and then an attack later. A very you know, finely played game, the same sort of opening, without risking playing something like the King's Gambit, which Steinitz had been playing like, you know, about 10 years before. So he built up a positional advantage on d5. Black made some serious errors, I think, uh, not pursuing some, some queenside counterplay. He did have a good position here, but he needs to get counterplay on the queenside because the king side is locked up. And for sure, he can't afford to give up this light square bishop like he had done in the previous example game. That that seems to be, you know, spelling the beginning of the end, especially with this bishop becoming a monster later on this diagonal, and without, you know, black being able to defend that with an equivalent piece. So um, maintaining the iron grip on d5, it really does show, this is, this is the dawn of, you know, major positional play, making sure the opponent hasn't got counterplay, and only then, you know, going for the attack, which is then completely you know, impossible to defend. Black simply hasn't got the resources to defend this, you know, even with best play, because this bishop's huge now on this diagonal. So, um, so after e4, queen takes h5, that's it. It's going to be actually a force to mating four, according to Rivka. If knight takes f5, you might be wondering, then there's queen h8, mate. So there's, there's no real defense here. Rook takes c3, what's strongest there? Bishop f7. And then f6, mate. No need to even recapture on uh, c c3. So horrific position for black. Okay, let's have a look at game 19. Steinitz playing black. So d4 is played, and Steinitz plays d5 classically. c4, now e6, queen's gambit declined. Knight c3, knight f6. Bishop g5, all standard stuff so far. Bishop e7, now white plays knight f3. So this is still recognized queen's gambit decline theory so far. But after castles, white played c5, which is not kind of theory by today's standards. I think black's already slightly better after this highly committal move. And Sonic's plays the right move to exploit it, I think. b6, so immediately undermining this pawn chain. The problem is b4, there's a5, which is uncomfortable because then black will continue to be fretting a takes b. So b4, so a5 would, would be a natural move here, but Steinitz plays another move which also emphasizes the problem of the overcommitted pawn on c5, because white really hasn't completed his development. To get this wedge is a bit premature. Maybe another case, you know, of attacking without um, building up advantage first, you know, attacking on the queen side. So b takes c5 was played, and after d takes c5, now there's the energetic a5. So white plays a3, and now another energetic move really wobbles the white position. This move d4, and it's really uncomfortable now for white. If he takes to the queen, then maybe just takes an ab4, attacking the knight, and maybe trying to win another pawn, or this pawn as well, as a3. So it's already looking a bit suspect. White voluntarily gave up the dark squared bishop. And instead of routinely capturing the bishop, Steinitz recaptured with the g pawn. He doesn't mind, his king's not that weak. There's nothing to exploit the double pawn complex here. Furthermore, e5 will mean his center will be strengthened. So knight a4, e5. So he's got the two bishops yet again. After b5, bishop e6. It must have been wonderful to have discovered elements of the position which opponents are just oblivious to. They they wonder why that you know they're losing game after game. You know, having the two bishops is one of those elements. Better control of the centre though as well here in this game. So g3. Now the move c6 questioning this b5 pawn. If the bishop's going to go to g2 and not support b5, well that's a prime target for attack as well. So White decides to dissolve that, but now black's 
you know, development is completed after knight takes c6. Everything's out. White's pawns are fragile. Black has an excellent position and also counterplay on the b file. So rook b1, queen c1, as though he might be doing some sort of vague attack with queen h6. Steinitz is not at all worried. He just plays d3. And in fact, after e3 now, the queen's blocked in in any way. Things get a lot worse. e4, and this bishop's about to be blocked in. So knight d2 with f5, nice pawn chain, and also this diagonal for the bishop. So this dark squared bishop is, is getting to be kind of dangerous. So rook e8 first, though, was played. Maybe a curious little waiting move, actually. Why not bishop f6 immediately? So that's kind of um, quite interesting. Um, after f3, in fact, maybe the surprise is unveiled here of why why not the immediate bishop f6. Because black uncorked a very strong tactical move. I wonder if you can spot it if I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, the natural move might be bishop f6, but white, you know, is attacking e4. So, you know, maybe he could do an exchange sack with f takes e. Black doesn't give him time to, to do an exchange sack on a1. He he plays knight d4. So he's threatening to fork the king and queen with knight e2 check. And this is really annoying. If this knight moves, well, the king has to move, but also uh, the knight's dangerous there generally after knight e2. Um, that there will be other threats like bishop f6 later. So so white took, and he's just gone material down. If if black um, takes here though, then f takes e4. So here is a a, a lovely positional sacrifice. I wonder if you can work it out. Not not the routine queen takes a4 because then f takes e. So what would you play here with black? So I've given you a clue. Positional sacrifice. You want to increase the trump cards of your own position and squash white's trump cards. So how would you do it? I'll give you five seconds. Okay, Steinitz plays e3. He's in no rush to win this knight. And now he's created two dangerous collected past pawns. And these two bishops are ready to sort white out as well, if necessary. So knight c3. And now instead of the routine e takes d2, what do you think Steinitz plays here to intensify his pressure still further? If I give you five seconds. Okay, he plays bishop f6. So this guy, 1886, he's playing such a beautiful game, starting with knight d4, and now these positional sacrifices and and just keeping the tension and the pressure on white's position. So the knight stumbles back, reminiscent of a later Karpov Kasparov sort of encounter. Now d2, the pawns are crashing through in the centre. Queen c2, now bishop b3. So the queen is encouraged to take on f5. And now black just finally converts his material, he queens. So knight takes, bishop takes. Look, the rooks and pre, and e2 is still threatened. What total devastation. Knight c3. Now black supports the bishop by playing e2. And also attacking the rook on f1. So, white played rook a takes d1. And now, guess what the finishing move was? Simple and elegant. If I give you five seconds. Black just finishes off with queen takes c3, just keeping this fork of the rooks. And White had enough. He resigned. What a crush, both positionally and tactically. And all starting from this slightly dubious c5 move. It was, it was very nicely exploited. Although not with the technical precision of a ribka, but still, these are, these are quite effective moves. a5 and d4. Really wobbling White's position straight away. Collecting the two bishops. A nice precursor to a crushing um, win, like in previous games. 
C6, blasting open the B file for the rook later. And now this avalanche in the center with D3. So echoing, you know, his uh, predecessor, you know, Philidor, the mo mobility of pawns, the capability to do positional sacrifices in order to increase the mobility of pawns. So these pawns really have the lust to expand. And knight d4 facilitates that lust. So um, just playing now e3. So two big passed pawns here. And then tons of pressure intensified with this dark square bishop, which white does not have. So white's getting a worse and worse position. So when the material conversion comes back, black is just massively better now still with huge pressure on the diagonal, huge threat of e2. What a crush!